many of you have ever run into a book called Crossing the Chasm? This is the Bible for high-tech startups, first written in 91, revised a couple of times most recently in 2002, and Jeff Moore and I have uh, worked together since 93. We're doing a new version called Crossing the Chasm X.0 because he's quite clear that doing clean tech is not the same as Web 2.0 or life sciences or even traditional IT. So if you're curious about where that's evolving, see us at the break and Christina and I can show you some of that. Key idea here, for those of you who haven't seen it, is this bell-shaped curve is simply the percent of the, the organizations or the people who are going to make their first purchase in your category, not necessarily of your product, but in your category, right? So it's you versus the competition is what this map looks like. And the little techies or innovators slice is meant to be about two and a half or three percent of the market. This is based on a model by Everett Rogers that Jeff Moore borrowed in the, in the early 90s. So the question you'd ask yourself is, who usually adopts an innovation first? And it turns out that people who are more technical, who are more curious, who like to experiment with an innovation, will take it on sooner because they just love to play with it. And it can be uh, something that involves, it's like hobbyists in the, in the PC industry, you'd buy a kit and you'd actually put your PC together and you'd figure out how to write programs for it and that was how the first computers, the personal computers were done. Most of us were not hobbyists, right? We had to wait until the software came with it so that we could get some work done. So the techies or innovators are about uh, two to three percent of the market. The good news is they'll help you figure out how to debug the product or service you're doing. What's the bad news? How much money do techies usually have? Not much. And how much are they willing to part with anyway? They're saying, well, I'm smarter than you. Why should I pay you for this? And they want it for free in exchange for their skill. You need them, but don't count on making a lot of revenue with them. The next group is actually really critical. It's about 12% of the market in, in most industries that we have looked at. And the idea here is this is someone in an organization who has the ability, if it's, a, if, if it's an organizational purchase, to write the check and who wants to be better than the others in the category. So if you think about your own clean tech categories, think about, okay, if we're selling to utilities, who are the utilities that have been most innovative in, in doing interesting things with alternative uh, to dirty coal or to diesel or whatever? If you can find utilities who are openly experimenting and they're willing to actually pay so that the, the suppliers can be profitable, those are your potential visionaries in that, in that sector. Every single industry or customer group will have a certain percent that are visionaries that want to be better than the competition. And they, they actually are not interested. If you come to them and say, well, we've got uh, 30 customers or 100 customers, they'll go, well, go away. It's too late. <laughs> you know, all I can do is catch up. I'm not interested in that because you should have gotten me earlier. So the visionaries will work with you to create a whole product. We'll talk about it a little bit earlier. And enough revenue and enough that you're starting to approach momentum a little bit, right? You've got some ka-ching. You're not at momentum yet. Momentum is a bridge that takes you from... Momentum is the bridge. Right. So once you've done that, you, you think about, and you're in that early market, you're doing what Christina talked about earlier where you say, let's identify some potential segments. We've got to figure out which one to dominate. So you're doing some things there. She'll go into more of that later. And then eventually you say, I've got the target segment I want to dominate. And the crossing of the chasm, and Jeff Moore uses the idea of a bowling alley where the first pin would be your beachhead or would be that segment that you choose to dominate. That first pin you choose based on its ability to knock down other pins. So it's an industry that would cause other industries to buy because they trust that industry. An example would be if a pharmaceutical company that was connected to um, hospitals or to doctors in some way decides to adopt your innovation, they may be able to convince the hospitals who are interested in clean and green to adopt the innovation as well. That's about 35% of the market. You can see that you're going into um, more and more momentum as you go into the tornado. And um, Christina's final stage is really, I think, somewhat equated with Main Street, right? The stage. No, you would actually just be in your on your beachhead. Further on. It stops at the beachhead. That's right, because you're doing you're doing in in one segment. So that's the model. Uh, we can talk about it more later, but the idea is that the people who buy at these different phases are segmented differently based on their orientation to risk.